Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures with me, Sula. It's time for another Deep Sky Challenge. Tonight, we're traveling about 10,000 light years away to a fascinating region of space that looks funny but contains some very interesting science. This is NGC 281, also known as IC11 or Sharpless 2-284. Inside the nebula lies a young star cluster called IC 1590 and a nearby remarkable multiple star system known as Burnham 1. Someone on the channel suggested IC 1590 and Burnham 1 a long time ago, but I have so many notebooks going at once that I couldn't find who suggested it. I'm sorry. If you're watching, thank you so much for this suggestion because this is an excellent object to observe. Let's explore what makes this region so interesting. NGC 281 is a large emission nebula, meaning it glows because its gas is energized by nearby stars. Some people call it the Pac-Man Nebula because they think the dark dust lanes make the shape of the nebula resemble a video game character. To me, the nebula looks like a giant fluffy comma <laughs> or a monster with its mouth open. This nebula is located in the constellation Cassiopeia and it's best seen in autumn and winter in the Northern Hemisphere and it has an apparent size of 30 arc minutes, so it's fairly big. It was discovered by American astronomer Edward Emerson Barnard in August 1883, and only later was the star cluster discovered, which tells you how difficult it is to see this star cluster because E.E. E. Barnard had legendary vision. The glowing red color of the nebula that shows up in long exposure photographs and not in your visual observations comes mainly from ionized hydrogen, which lights up when intense ultraviolet radiation from the young stars hit the surrounding gas. But this nebula isn't just glowing, it's active. Embedded within NGC 281 are dense pockets of gas and dust called Bach globules. These are cold, dark regions where new stars may eventually form because they're protected from harsh radiation by thick dust. At the heart of NGC 281 lies IC 1590, a young open star cluster of about 279 stars. These stars form from the same cloud of gas and are only 3.5 million years old. That's extremely young by cosmic standards, but most of the stars are of magnitude 17 or so, which is out of reach of most amateur telescopes, except for Burnham 1, which is part of the star cluster. The most massive stars in IC 1590 are hot blue stars, and they play a major role in shaping the nebula. Their strong stellar winds and radiation are slowly pushing gas outward, sculpting the strange appearance of this nebula. And this star cluster inside this emission nebula is very reminiscent of another much more famous nebula, M42, the Great Orion Nebula in Orion the Hunter, that contains a star cluster of hot young stars called the trapezium. And indeed, inside the nebula, is a fascinating object, Burnham 1, a multiple star system. That's a system which is two or more stars. They're gravitationally bound and orbiting each other. And this star system, if you can see it, <laughs> resembles the trapezium in M42. The brightest component of the system is Burnham 1, also known as B1 or HD 5005 or HIP 4121. This multiple star was discovered later by Sherburne Wesley Burnham, a famous double star observer. What makes NGC 281 so fascinating is that it contains multiple stages of stellar evolution all in one place. The glowing gas clouds, the newborn star clusters, and a stable multiple star system. This star system hasn't changed much since it was measured in 1875. 
But warning, <laughs> seeing the multiple star system is hard. The brightest star, B1, is magnitude 9. So pretty easy to see it and find it. But it has a companion just 1.4 arc seconds away. Hard. The other companions are 15 arc seconds away or so. So much easier to separate. I'm going to look at these objects with my 10-inch Dobsonian Herschel and a 102 millimeter refractor. I'm going to look both from a dark sky site and a very light polluted area. So I'll be back when it's dark. This is the equipment I'll be using for this presentation. My 10-inch Dobsonian or reflector. And by the way, I've decided to name it Herschel because it's just perfect. It's the perfect telescope. And a 102 millimeter refractor on my Ioptron GEM28 mount. It's a go-to mount, but this object is very easy to find. It's very close to Achard, Eta Cassiopeia, which is a naked eye star and a beautiful double star. But I'll show you where it is when it gets dark. Oh my goodness, look at that. The belt of Venus and the Earth's shadow. Okay, to find NGC 281, locate Cassiopeia, the giant W. This time of year, it's on its side, and later in the evening, it'll be upside down and making an M. But locate Atcher or Eta Cassiopeia, which is a naked eye star. Right oh, there. And NGC 281 is just 1.3 degrees east-southeast of Atcher. So right there. Okay, I have NGC 281 in my telescope. And by the way, I'm using a UHC filter. Use either a UHC filter or even an O3 filter to bring the nebulosity out. But if you're in a dark enough place, it's a pretty bright nebula. You might be able to see it without a filter, but I can see it and it and it looks like a very thick <laughs> comma. A, a thick, fluffy comma. Very pretty. Beautiful. And the star field is full and rich because Cassiopeia has a lot of star clusters in it. <laughs> but this star cluster, IC1501, is hard. Um, but I do see Burnham 1, the brightest star in NGC 281. But I'm only at... 50 times magnification, so I'm going to magnify now. And when you're looking at Burnham 1, take your filter off. And you want to magnify to about 200 times. So let me go get another eyepiece. Be back in a second. Okay. Ignore all the bright stars around the nebula. Burnham 1 is inside the nebulosity, that bright star. I have it now in here, and I am only at 120 times magnification. I can see the three stars. They're magnitude 9.6, 9.7, something like that. Um, I can see the three. Now, here's the tricky part. See the fourth one, which is only 1.4 arc seconds from the brightest star of this multiple star system. So let me see, let me put a Barlow on here with this. <laughs> oh yes, I nailed it. I'm at 240 times. I put my 10 millimeter Ethos with the two time Barlow <laughs> to make it 240 times. Look how far it's sticking out, but very sharp. Good seeing this evening because that is hard to split a star that's that close. Beautiful. It's tiny. It's magnitude 9.9. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> this was a great success. It took me a long, long time to study it, though. You got to wait till the seeing is very steady and magnified to at least 200 times. A little more if you can, because these things are tight, but beautiful.
the trapezium of NGC 281. <laughs> yes. Now, about that star cluster, I don't know. I mean, I can see <laughs> Burnham, or if there are other stars, I don't know what where they are. But I guess I could say I saw the star cluster. I don't know. What do y'all see? E.E. E. Barnard didn't see a star cluster when he discovered his GC 281s, and he had excellent eyesight too, by the way. And apparently so does Sue French. <laughs> anyway, yes. Now I have NGC 281 in my 102 millimeter refractor. I'm not very magnified. I don't even have a filter, but I can see the nebula. But now I do need to magnify to try to see Burnham 1. Okay. I have been studying Burnham 1, and I can see the three stars, magnitude 8.6, 8.9, and 9.6, I think, but the fourth one, uh, severe challenge maybe equals not possible in a 102 millimeter refractor. I don't know. Maybe it's possible on a night of exceptional seeing, but I don't see it. But I did see it with my 10-inch Dobsonian, so you can see it. I mean, it is hard. Do you know how hard it is to split a star that's 1.4 arc seconds? Hard. Hello again. I had to leave Arcadia because I ran out of food. <laughs> so I'm back in the Bay Area, Bortle 7 site. I took an SQM and it was 18.17. So it was pretty light polluted here. But I got out my 102 millimeter refractor again because I wanted to see if I could see the diffuse nebula NGC 281 in a very light polluted area. And I did. I was at 71 times magnification with the UHC filter and I could see it. This is a pretty bright nebula. And I also took some photos of Burnham 1, the multiple star system. And now I am going to try again to split this very very difficult star with this refractor. I went and got a Barlow and now I magnified it 408 times and I think I, I think I split it. It's the brighter star that is the really tight one 1.4 arc seconds apart. I think I split it pretty cool. This one is super hard, way harder than the nebula. <laughs> and double stars are a perfect object for light polluted areas. So give it a try, even if you live in a light polluted area. And even try for the nebula because you can see it. And you can split this double star, but it's hard. So that's the trapezium that powers the nebula NGC 281. The star cluster, I still don't know. I mean, Burnham 1 is part of the cluster, so I, I guess I can say I've seen the cluster too. <laughs> so the next time you have a look at NGC 281, now you know it's not just a fun shape in the sky. It's a dynamic region where stars are born, where environments are shaped, and where gravity weaves complex systems like Burnham 1. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Dark skies forever, Sula, signing off.